Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special pistol for you today. This is the French 1777 Flintlock Cavalry Pistol. The last third of the 18th century was the time of the Enlightenment, when a small group of French artillery officers like Griboval and Guibert, who were also engineers, tried to standardize the production of the guns to make it more cost-effective and to speed up the production processes. The 1777 pistol is a good example of this wheel. It replaced the standard 1763 model Liberville pistol. The new model was theoretically cheaper and all the parts were designed with having the idea of complete interchangeability and machine-aided manufacturing in mind. And this pistol has a very unique feature. You can see that it has the standard wooden grip, it has the steel barrel, but the lock and the trigger mechanism is held together in a brass frame. And this is one of the very first occasions when you have a separate frame on the pistol, just like the one we have on modern self-loading pistols. The 1777 model pistol was intended to be the most modern cavalry pistol of the 18th century. But just as in the case of the 1777 muskets, the production was not able to keep up with the high quality demands of the state hired inspectors. The job of this personnel was to examine every single part of the firearm with official gauges and to reject them if they were not perfect, even if the pistol itself was working fine. The horse soldier using a short firearm was born with the wheellock pistols. These were the first pistols that could be carried into the fight, cocked and loaded. However, it was not easy to find the right method of fighting against the combined armed closed infantry formations of the late 16th and first half of the 17th century. The cavalry started to get lighter and lighter by getting rid of the heavy armors, and the firearms became more and more important, but in the age of the muzzle-loading guns the pistol or carbine was never able to completely replace the sword or the lance. One reason for this that the large caliber smoothbore muzzle-loading pistols were extremely inaccurate, so having no sights on this palmetto repro does not really change the practical combat distance. The pistol is equipped with a steel belt hook, which was commonly removed from the gun, as the primary storage were the holsters attached to the saddle. The ramrod is steel also, and it is kept in the hole drilled into the brass frame. The caliber of the 189mm long barrel was 17.1mm, and it is not rifled of course. The pistol originally fired a 16.5mm lead round ball weighing 27 grams. For my historical shooting session I made some paper cartridges to replicate the original loading method. I loaded them with 60 grains of musket powder. The firing mechanism of the pistol shows some interesting features also. Just as on the other members of the 1777 family, the pen closes an angle with the barrel axis to ease the loading. The position of the frizz and spring is also interesting. It is in a reverse position compared to other contemporary Marshall pistols. The Palmetto copy is the only one you can find on the market today. The overall quality is fine, not up to the highest levels, but with a little magic touch you will have a nice little repro. These pistols were manufactured in the Charleville, Maubeuge and Saint-Étienne arsenals in huge numbers and also it was supplied to the American Revolutionary Forces. But to tell you the truth, it was not a successful design as it proved quite unreliable and hard to repair. And also the cost of production was a bit higher than expected. So later it was changed back to the normal traditional design with the separate lock and the separate trigger mechanism lacking the frame. The 1777 pistol played an important part in the American firearms history, as this was the sample for the very first American-made Marshall pistol, the pistol produced by Simon North. North manufactured Marshall pistols for the US government for 30 years dating from 1799 to 1829. He received the first contract from the government to produce 500 pistols in 1799 for a price of 6.5 US dollars per piece. With additional orders, he made altogether 2,000 pieces until September 1802. It's a good copy, but there are some differences compared to the French model. First of all, there is no belt hook on the American model. It has one more screw to secure the barrel to the frame. And there are slight modifications and slight differences in the size of the grip as well. If you check the cavalry instructions of any of the armies of the Napoleonic times, you will find a maximum range of 20 paces or 50 meters for a cavalry pistol, which is already an over-optimistic number, as even today the standard combat distance for a pistol is not more than 8 meters. If you add the lack of sights, the smoothbore and the loose-fitting bullet, you can be sure that 8 meters can be a challenging combat for the 1777 pistol. But as I am not a soldier, but a target shooter, I started my work at the standard 25 meters. 
The bow was 0.6mm smaller than the bore, that made the loading easy even if the barrel was fooled. This large gap was really needed, as the cartridges were not lubricated at all. So, ladies and gentlemen, this pistol is so inaccurate you have to approach the enemy to 3 meters to have a secure hit. And it's a... Um, 8. It's a great fun to shoot this pistol, but I really have to tell you that this is not the best service time I have ever handled. Look what we have here. I have 1, 2... No, no, this was the last shot. 1, 2, 3, 4 five shots from 25 meter from the rest so this means that without the sights I don't really think that this pistol can be effective above the range of three meters just imagine you're riding your horse and you want to shoot like this no chance at all but if the pistol is empty you still have a beautiful club Shooting the 1777 pistol is not easy because you technically do not have any kind of sight on the bore. No rear sight, no foresight. And the barrel is cone shaped, so technically if you are using the upper side of the barrel for aiming as a guide for aiming, you are already aiming high. So at 25 meter you actually have to aim at the leg of the soldier to have a hit in the upper body. Not easy at all. So for target shooting this pistol is nothing. With the original service load it is nearly impossible to hit the man size target at 25 meters, so I will have to find a new purpose for this gun. And I was thinking about skeet shooting. Why not? It's a smooth bore, it's 69 caliber. This should be okay. Let's try. We start with 60 grains of black powder. Sixty grains there. We need an overpowder bed. Ramic in place. We need some shot. Five, so in this case in volume it is the now it is in the same volume of shot as the same volume of powder. So this is the very simple and easiest method of loading your black powder shotgun and we give it an overshot lead ram it in place and we'll just have to prime it and it's ready So ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you enjoyed this little time travel in the Cap and Ball YouTube channel. Stay tuned and keep your powder dry and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like what you see.